Okay, we'll open with a statement from Coates, and we'll take uh, questions from the for uh, any questions from uh, for Coates. Uh, obviously, the outcome of the game is secondary at this point. Um, you know, not in your stomach when you uh, have one of your <clears throat> one of your guys go down. Um, I've had it twice in two days. Uh, you guys, insignificant to any of you guys in here, but Zach Griffin is a stress fracture is out. And if you guys know how important Zach is, you can ask Kofi because he busts Kofi's ass every single day in practice and Georgie's ass every single day. He's out with a stress fracture. And I know how hard that kid works. And uh, then obviously, you know, I was slipping here at the end. Uh, we don't know anything. We won't know anything. We're not going to release anything until we do know something. And, and, um, they're in the great hands of our, of our medical staff here. <coughs> Um, but, um, you know, when you get uh, uh, something like that, it, uh, uh, it happens, it becomes, the game becomes secondary. But um, talking about the game was a uh, tale of two halves. Um, I have yet to figure, figure out why we can't play hard. Um, and we do that at times. Uh, our team walked in uh, before the game, and I, I literally – Asked the coaches after they left, and I said, are we ready? I said, because it was almost like a somber um, funeral in the game before. And, and uh, before the Maryland game, we were probably too high. We were through the roof. And uh, we played like it in the first half, not to take anything away from Michigan State. Um, and... Um, but uh, the second half was a different story. We rode with the guys that we felt great about and that were, were playing. Um, I felt great about DeMonte Williams. I was trying very hard to get DeMonte on the court in the second half, and that group was so good. And playing was so much, uh, uh, I don't know, it was, the spacing was good. We were flowing. We were, we were, uh, we were doing a lot of positive things. But... Um, uh, but anyway, that was, um, uh, you know, Cassius does what Cassius does. He rejects a ball screen, uh, which we try not to allow. And Kofi had to help and uh, uh, left uh, Tillman wide open. So, but uh, proud of Kofi stepping up as a freshman in that environment, making two free throws. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then... You know what what Dre does every single night. We we sit up here and we talk about. It. I'm running out of superlatives and adjectives, and you know he gets every tough rebound. He's our just about our leading rebounder every night. And, and uh, Allen was terrific again. You know it seems like every night I put Allen out there, no matter how many minutes he plays, he's going to get seven to ten rebounds. So um, you know it was uh, uh, a tough first half for Iowa and a tough tough night for for Trent. Give their defense credit; they're the best defensive team in our league, but. Uh, um, is there a night? Our thoughts and prayers are with 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 Io. Questions for the players? Yeah. Andres, just when you see an injury like that to your teammate, what goes through your head, and how does this team have to respond to it? Uh, it's really tough, you know. Like I is one of the, the best players in the country right now, and uh, he's really part of us, you know. But we we don't know why. Uh, was his condition right now? We got to wait on the, the test and the, oh, the the doctor go to check him out and tell us if he's gonna be good. You know, we got to wait on that. You know, he's just such a great player. I, I hope for my pray for him. You know, he's gonna be back soon. We'll leave that for Andres and uh, Kofi. Second like sellout, Orange Crush was rocking. What is it like playing in that atmosphere? And do you really feel like the fans kind of pick you guys up at certain moments? You no, know, playing home is just, just that's the that's the most important thing because we had to say like the six men, they always there, you know, like you yeah yeah I saw it in the second half when we was like making our run and it was important enough, you know, like sharing defense on that's on that's really important for us and we, we hope that that's keep coming for the next games. Back here to the left. Kofi, could you describe what you saw with Io and just your reaction and what it was like in the locker room after the game? 
with us all Ayo. Um, I was 100% sure Ayo was making that shot, so I was just basically chasing down the ball to pick him up if he fell off of the M1 or something. So, like, that was in my mind the whole time he was driving, coming out. He's going to make this shot because he's been big time for us the whole time. Um, he's known for making clutch shots like that. So that's seen that happen to him. Um, <laughs> in, the, in the moment, it was a little bit overwhelming because, you know, that's one of our best players and we need him in. But now we, all I have in my mind is just praying for him, praying for him, making sure that I keep asking God to heal him and make sure that he's good. I don't know what happened to him yet, but that's all in my mind right now. Just praying for Ayo. I'm trying to be there for him. As Coffee, what would you maybe attribute to the, the slow start tonight? And then what, what was different when you guys came back in the second half? Pardon me? What, what would you say maybe led to the slow start tonight? And then what was different uh, in the second half? Uh, I have no idea what led to the slow start, to be honest. Um, we have a really bad reputation of doing that, starting to get more um, slow. And the second half, we just went to the locker room and we got a couple of words from coaches on motivation. Um, telling us that we got to stick together and make sure that we elevate the cameras beside us. We just came out here and we did what we do best. We played together, passed the ball, and then we, we, we communicated on defense, we locked in, and stuck to assignments. Anything else for the player for you? Andre's coach mentioned a kind of a, a quiet locker room, I guess, before the game. Did, did you feel that too? What do you attribute those that kind of lack of energy to? Yeah, I agree with him. I just you know, one of the parts that I'm trying to be better as well, you know, I'm trying to get on the same page as him. Every time I see the locker room down like that, I'm going to step up more, be more vocal. <coughs> and, you know, because we can add the, uh, because I think that's one of the reasons we have a slow start as well. And I think um, I, won't let, I won't let that happen again. You know, for my part, I'm going to try to step up as a leader and uh, try to be on the same, uh, same page as the coach. This is for this is for either of you. Just how do you guys go about the next couple of days of just trying to move on from this loss and move on to the next game with the uh, or with Iowa's injury? I guess just looming over your guys' head because it, there's no way you're gonna be able to get that. Out we, we have no idea what happened to Iowa. Um, hopefully we get him back, but it's always on to the next game with us. Um, that's our mindset. Um, after every game, win, win or loss, it's on to the next one. So we're just gonna prepare for Rutgers now and make sure that we come in and we work hard in practice. So. He could be good in the game. Uh, this is for you, Kofi. I know uh, I was been someone you just kind of mentored you since you got here. Can you talk about your relationship with him and how much he means to you? Yeah, I love Ayo. Um, that's my brother. Um, he takes on me off the court. He makes sure he's always makes sure I'm good. I always make sure I'm doing good in school. I mean, it's it's, it's everything about it's, it's everything except basketball with Ayo, and that's why it hurts me so much to see him fall like that. Now, even though I don't know what happened to him, it really hurts me because he's one of those guys that really look out for me but outside of basketball, and that means a lot to me. Coming from somebody like Ayo, who he has a lot to be focused on, but he still takes the time out to look after me. So um, Ayo's a lovely, he's a great guy. You get to know him, and um, we build a really good relationship, and I hope he's there. That's all I'm, I'm just praying. It's, it's really a big shot for me. Anything else for players? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Questions for uh, Coach Underwood, right here in front. Hello? Barry. Right here in front. <laughs> Brad, obviously, game second game, but you start with Allen over Georgie in the second half. What's gone into his struggles, and is that something you think you could do moving forward as a smaller one? Oh, we've been messing with it a lot in practice. Um, that's something that we've been uh, uh, trying to create space. Trying to trying to uh, free Kofi up a little bit, to be honest, to try to free driving lanes. I think you saw tonight what we can do driving the basketball. Uh, there's a lot. There's a ton of ways to uh, to get the ball to the front of the rim, and uh, it doesn't always have to be through a post up. You can do a cutting. You can do a driving. Uh, I love the fact we got to the line 25 times tonight, and uh, you know that was uh, uh, that was something that uh, you know, we tried to emphasize. So. Uh, yeah, what well, definitely wasn't Georgie's best night, and, and we had to change something because that that wasn't working. Here in the back. Tevian, first one off the bench, scored early. What has he been doing in practice to to earn that time? Playing better. 
pretty simple. I mean, it's it's about trust. It's about not you know, and, and I I mean that sounds cliche and it's a short answer. But he's playing better. He's not. He's making less mistakes. And and uh, you know, it's both ends of the court. And uh, uh, you know, we need what he can provide. He can provide some perimeter shooting, and, and we need that. Saying he thought um, your guys' points off turnovers was a big factor for the second half. Um, just how much of a focus was that going into the second half to kind of try to get things up going off that? Well, I mean, I think if, if you know, and I'm not speaking on for Tom's team, but it's the one thing they do a lot, you know, is they have a tendency to turn the ball over. And, uh, you know, it's one of the, they're one of the few teams that are changing style. Um, Going, getting away from all the denial and the pressure probably impacts us more than than, than anybody because of uh, their ability to do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought our defense was very good. It gave us opportunities. It got us downhill. And, um, you know, they are uh, you know they played a good stretch without Cassius due to foul trouble. Uh, and we were trying to go at him. Uh, that was part of what we were trying to do. But, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that makes secondary – and, and third ball handler is that much more important. We, we got a few easy baskets off of it. Mark and Olivia. Coach, Coach, obviously Iowa going down. Um, the players were asked how they handle the next couple of days. How does the coaching staff handle the next couple of days in practice without one of the leaders and stars of this team? Well, we're off tomorrow, so that's, um, that's, that's refreshing and probably very much needed at this point. Uh, Mentally as well as physically, and then you know it, it's it's no different than what they said. And, and you know I've got a very simplistic approach. I can only coach who I have, and uh, you make you make adjustments and you, you get into practice. And uh, uh, you know that's it's the next man up mentality. And uh, you know I like I like our I like our group, and, and we'll uh, you know we'll figure that out as we get the news. Obviously, nobody can replace him, but having Andres, um, what do you need out of him? What do you need out of Trent if Iowa can't go for a certain Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll figure all that out. I mean, Andres is a big part of it, and, and Allen, and, you know, that, that, that means Tevian and Kipper, and everybody's got to do a little bit more when you replace a guy that's, uh, uh, you know, that's of Iowa's stat, stature. But at, at this point, I don't know if we've got to replace him or not. I, you know, it could be a... You know, bruise, who knows? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Brad, I asked the student athletes the same questions, but there's just a couple home games remaining, second sale out tonight in a row. Uh, how confident are you that whoever comes in to State Farm Center is going to be in a hostile environment? Well, this is what we face every single night. I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I, I, I've said this. Tonight was by far and away, <laughs> by far and away, the loudest I've ever heard this building. Tonight, this building was the loudest building we have been in since my time here. Uh, not even close. Uh, that was electric, and uh, that was that was fun. And I'm so grateful for uh, the week that we have such passionate fans. And uh, uh, you know, it's 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 the process of, of building that back to that level. And uh, you know, it's, as our program continues to build and grow, that's 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 fun, man. I love driving in at two hours before and seeing a line and and. Uh, know that our, our, our people are proud of us and our kids can walk around with their heads up. And, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's what this thing is all about. Just for accurate purposes, that was in third street. So, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Rocket Watts came out of high school as a, guy, maybe, as a guy that could put a game like this together. What did he do tonight that was maybe tough to, to stop? Well, I think we lost him a couple times. We, we would, uh, uh, you know, he's been Probably like any freshman, up and down, and uh, and inconsistent. I mean, you look at what he did in, the, in their last game. <coughs> Tom Harley played him, and uh, but yeah, he is that guy. And and you know, when he sees one ball go in, that thing looks like a 55 gallon drum. And uh, you know, he's got one assist in their last five games, and we told our guys that uh, you know when he gets it and goes, he is never passing it. And yet. Uh, uh, we were late to adjustments. Uh, you can't help off of him, and he got a couple buckets going that way, and and, uh, and he had a huge night of yours. Coach, you said you've said in the past that you love when former players come back 
Darren here tonight. I think I saw him he was at practice. Did he say anything to the team or anything tonight or address them at all? Yeah, he just talked about how proud he was to be back and how much he loves his place and, and uh, you know the 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 atmosphere of seeing that he, he he was excited and he was talking about how uh, how proud that, that that this program and these guys have made him feel watching games. You uh, clearly weren't very happy with the call on IO in the second half, um, but did did you get any type of explanation on that? Want to elaborate on your feelings? <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> You gonna pay my fine? <laughs> you gonna pay my fine? I, 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 gosh, darn! I, man, we teach our, we, we practice loose ball drills. We practice them, and uh, it, it is. I, I've never, I've never seen it that. I've never seen that call. I've never, I've never seen that. So I'm. Um, you know, it's when a young guy dives on the floor for a loose ball to not get rewarded because the other kid does it and tries to reach down and pick it up. I'll leave it at that. I, with three minutes to go in the game. Do it. You Fred Demonte a couple three pointers that have gone down in the last few days. Is there anything different with him as a matter of confidence and in terms of that shot? Yeah, it's probably. Um, I mean, I, I told him don't stop shooting them. I mean, and I've told you guys this, he practices them, he makes a million of them, he shoots as many balls as anybody on our team. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of of seeing those things go in. And, and uh, you know, like I said, he's, he, he can help us stretch the floor. He's a very good driver, and that's something that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, uh, very comfortable with. Yeah. I know you guys have made defensive changes, but were you surprised at how many times you went under screens in the first half, and was that addressed at halftime? Well, yeah, absolutely. But again, those are you, you take away. You, we took away their their strength, okay? Which is Cassius and Tillman. If you if you uh, and Gabe Brown, they do an unbelievable job, better than anybody in the country, of setting pin down screens. And if you wrap them, which we do a lot, if you wrap them. They roll, that forces help, and you, you're on an empty side. And it was just a scouting decision. Um, you know, I thought we did a good job on, on, on Tillman. We were going to live with, um, we, we were going to live with, with Henry shooting them. Uh, but uh, yeah, we made the adjustment on Rocket, and uh, then we were, gonna, we were going to uh, lock and trail uh, Cassius all night long. But, um, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, we're seven of eighteen, and you know, we feel better about those op those those options, and they do the the uh, the two man game that they're elite at. Right. On, on the last play, you said you made a bad read on the ball screen defense. Was it was Trent supposed to force him into the ball screen and not let him? Refuse? Yeah, we never reject. We never allow a reject. We always adjust our feet. And uh, Kofi made the right call. And. Uh, you know, Cassius just kind of in and out, and, and, and got Trent a little off balance, and then got downhill. And and when that happens, uh, it's supposed to be an automatic switch. And uh, Kofi takes would have taken Cassius. Trent slides and takes Tillman, and and tries to sit on his legs, and instead both went with the ball. Anything else for Coach? No, Shannon, I here. Um, I know you, you said often about Georgie, other players, it's you know better to be able to dial a player back, but is he ever getting his own head? Is, maybe that's too simplistic, or is he play a little too emotional at times, or was that some of the issues yeah, tonight? I, no, I think that's, some, that's something that throughout Georgie's time, we, 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 we try to find that perfect balance, and uh, you know, we've seen Georgie at his, at his very best, and right now he's Things are things are a little tougher for him, and and you can try too hard. You can uh, you can put too much pressure on yourself, and and uh, you know we've got to we, we need him. We've got to get him. We've got to get him back, and and uh, uh, in a posi- in a position to help our ball team down the stretch. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.